today we've got Shane here from the RGS. He's going to come to talk to us about different grants and exploration and whether it's worth the risk. The Society has been giving grants to expeditions since its inception and some of those early ones were um, for the exploration of and the opening up of Africa where they had no idea where the Nile went or where they had any idea where the Niger went. Um, but nowadays, since the 50s, we've been giving grants to, to undergraduates particularly and other student groups. Um, and the good thing about what's called geographical fieldwork grants is that they also allow you to say that your project has been endorsed by the RGS IBG. So it's quite good for getting other people to provide funding, particularly commercial organisations, who you use it to say, well, this is, if the Royal Geographical Society um, thinks that this is a, a, a worthwhile, effective, safe, responsible expedition, if it's good enough for them, then maybe it's good enough for us, and it gives them some sort of backup. Um, the grants are between 750 and 3,000 pounds, and the good thing is it isn't a competition. It's not winner takes all. Um, we were giving away. Um, they're only to teams, um, but we've been giving over 70,000 pounds plus away, away each year, um, and uh, you know we gave them to 20 plus um, in 2013. So definitely worth giving it a go, but it does have to be teams. Um, if you're not geographers and it isn't a geographical project, see if you can actually put the geography into the application. And if you have any doubts about it, you're very welcome to find Sophie or talk to me about how we interpret, for example, geography in, in biological sciences or environmental sciences. I mean, the easy one is, is mapping and place. But also we're interested in, in legacy and, what, um, and, and perhaps partnership with the host country. So you get scored very highly if you're working with students or others in the host country or an NGO in the host country. Um, we like good ideas. As I say, look for original ideas because we are like everyone else. We like to be inspired. We like to, you know, we believe passionately in field work and we want to think, wow, that's a good idea. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be original, but I think it has to be clear about why you're doing it and what the outcomes will be. Um, and the context in which it's there. Clearly, if you are going to do a baseline survey in a national park in Costa Rica for three weeks, you are not going to be writing a new management plan for that protected area. But what you can do is say how your data might fit into a longer term project or longer term aims, and that will give it the context on why that's re relevant. Uh, as I say, th that you actually can collect the data, you've got an appropriate amount, you know what you're going to do in the field. Um, by the time you apply to the RGS, which is the end of January, you may not have sorted out all your methodologies, but you need to have a pretty good idea about how you're going to do it. Um, so really what you've got is, what are you going to do, and how are you going to do it? Um, obviously the involvement, um, and what you're going to do with the results. And that could be giving talks, it could be doing podcasts, it could be... Um, putting, um, engaging schools in, in field research, the health and safety question. The exciting thing is that we also have some grants for individuals doing field work a little bit longer, um, and they are for women, I'm afraid. Two grants of 500 um, to do geographical research. Um, again, the host country, female students under 25. I don't know how we quite get away with that in this not being gender specific and not being <laughs> age specific these days, but I think it's because it was a legacy. Henrietta Hutton was a, an Oxford undergraduate um, who, uh, who's, um, whose money um, was left to the society in perpetuity to give grants. Um, originally it was only for Oxford students. She was actually an ornithologist, so there is a, you know, there is a strong environmental sciences and then there's a, a Monica, Monica Cole one. She was a physical geographer, I think, here, wasn't she? I think she was the King's lecturer, wonderful woman, um, you know, leading physical geographer. Um, and again, her bequest enables us to give away a thousand um, a year. Um, so that's definitely worth looking. 
Um, at the moment, I have a, an intern working for um, updating um, all our directories of grant-giving organisations, and I left her still doing that. So, you know, if you don't play, you don't win. You will be amazed how many grant-giving organisations don't actually get very many applications. So, some of it's a numbers game. Of course, look that they're relevant um, to your project and that you qualify within the criteria, because if you're a man age 27, you're not going to get the Henrietta Hutton Award. <laughs> um, and you know, the same for local trusts that say you must live within, a, you know, within the M25. But there are a surprising number up there, um, and we actually have a directory of other funding sources on our website. Some are delicious links, and we're about to put up a PDF because dear old delicious was bought by Yahoo, and it's a bit of a nightmare to use. Um, but there are grants for exhibitions and fieldwork, there are grants for individuals to join someone else's project on there, and then some general grant giving organisations which tend to be for, for larger research projects. So definitely worth having a look and drawing up a short list and working out when the deadlines are um, and what you're eligible for, because even if you're not planning an expedition or field work this year, if you know they're out there, just keep, a, keep something together. Um, thanks to the internet, we give away most of our publications free. So the entire expedition handbook is free as downloadable chapters. Um, you don't have to buy a copy. The Oxford handbook is the only one that you have to buy because it's published by OUP. But an earlier version, which obviously isn't as so up to date um, on things like drug regimes and treatment, is also available as a free download. So it'll give general guidance on things like um, diarrhea, snake bite, malaria prophylaxis. So you know, it's there for you and free for the taking. So if you're interested in any of those topics to integrate as part of your, um, your research programme, again, they're there. There are ideas for what's feasible in short time, field seasons, methodologies you might apply, and they really kickstart you. We're just doing one on camera trapping um, because we've been running a camera trapping tra course for a while now. Um, and if you really don't want to organise your own expedition, um, but you want to join someone else's, then we do have an e-bulletin of vacancies that come up. They tend to be a weird and wonderful mix of science <laughs> and adventure, and I take no responsibility for the organisers of any of them, so please check them out, even if you see they come from us. No quality control in there at all. Um, but if you want to know more, then we're running this big expedition seminar um, over the weekend of 16th and 17th of November. Um, Friday night we've got a wonderful lecture which is free by a girl called Emily Penn, who's an ocean ad advocate, um, who's been working out in the Pacific looking at um, societal change and particularly um, looking at how some of the Pacific islands have been responding to massive influx of waste. It's always a great gathering and a great weekend, um, but if not, use our website as a resource. Um, thanks to Brani, um, she did lots of links off it. Um, so in summary, um, be clear about why you're doing it. Be clear with your aim and be able to that elevator lift pitch is the one that you want to sort of focus down on um, so that you can explain that to it, the how you're going to do it. Um, and I suggest you're not too ambitious on your first project because it's really nice to do something well rather than to be overwhelmed by it. Um, remain flexible. You don't have to get it right in this first stage. Plans are for changing. Budgets will change. Even what you want to study will change. And even funding agencies like the RGS, if you have to change a plan and you come back to us and say, look, we've decided it really isn't feasible to work in this area, we'd rather work, we sometimes have completely different parts of the world. If you can demonstrate that, um, that that's a sensible thing to do, we'll continue to support you even after we've approved one project. We might ask you to send a few more plans in. And most people would rather see you do a good, successful project and recognise that your first attempt wasn't going to work out. Sometimes it's, in, it's items beyond your control, like the political situation, or you can't get permissions. Um, so go for that. Um, and be enthusiastic, because if you're not passionate about your project, no one else will be. So good luck. Thank you very much.